And then we took them and duct taped them across my porch railing by their legs. What? That's crazy. Still to this day. You're thinking, evil. Still to this day thinking about it. I'm like, I don't really know why we did that. Look at those men. Look at their mics. So damn cool. Funny and right. They're men. They're men. They're men. They're men. Men with mics. The boys are back. Back and we're YouTube stars. YouTube stars. You, Casey's a YouTube star. Everyone go watch Casey's new video week two of him turning into the Hulk. Bang, 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 bang. Are you? What if you get so shredded and then I'm? You're gonna have to show me how to work out. That what if would you just, be something else. Be, it might I've happen. actually. I've been hating working out lately. I'm not gonna lie to you. I would be lying to both myself and the audience if I said that thought hasn't gone through my mind. <laughs> I've Just like turn had, the tables on me. I've had the fantasy whole of like, <laughs> of like what if like Chen's gets chubby? Yeah, it'd be sick. Like, just like all I need is like 20 pounds out of you. And then like, I really need to bust my ass pounds still. Would be crazy. I really need to bust my ass. But if I could put 20 pounds of straight fat on you, I think we could really get to a point where I'm giving the fitness that advice would be, on that this would podcast. That would be such a sad, like you look at an old episode and then <laughs> they fast forward a few episodes and just totally Dude, like different. I'm like, oh God, I you would, let, you would, Jen's let himself go. You would literally think that this podcast went through like a, like a Lindsay Lohan Freaky Friday <laughs> situation. Like one episode we like, you'd have to look for the episode where like we bumped heads or something and like <laughs> switched bodies. It would be sick if we were able to do that in a week. Like if I was able to put on 20 pounds in a week, <laughs> just the next week I come in and I'm huge. Yeah, that It'd would be, be uh, very sick. Yeah. <laughs> Literally sick. Yeah, as long as you could do the reverse. Um, so on the topic of YouTube, the boys are very close to 100 subscribers on YouTube. Very close. Very close. I think we're only three away as of recording. Now, if you're not, are you, uh, most of our, most of the Mikeys are listeners. We do recommend watching. The video's good. You can see our handsome faces. You can see Casey's transformation happen in real time. I have a mustache on this episode. He has a you didn't know that until just you now. You would not know. If you were listening, you have no, you don't know what Casey's wearing. You don't know what his facial hair looks like. You don't know what shirt I'm wearing. So, so if you're a listener, we love that you listen. We love that you listen, but we also think maybe try watching. And even if you want to just keep listening, just throw us a subscribe. Quick little hit, sub. Hit subscribe. Guess what? Here's it. what I here's what I say in my my new YouTube videos. Now that I'm a YouTube star, right? I say subscribing's free, and if you change your mind, you can always unsubscribe. That's true. You can. That's all there is to it, people. It is true. So go do that. Get the boys to a hundred. Subscribe. Wasn't there, there was the, I don't know if we ever reached where you had to get the tattoo. Remember that? Oh, we've, I think we've guaranteed quite a few things yeah. that I would rather not take back up. Yeah. I think at one point we were supposed to blow each other. <laughs> well, for like we five reviews. Yeah, we don't our, need to our hit anything Our standards were so low back during the early days. We don't need to hit anything We get five reviews, we'll blow each other. <laughs> <laughs> like, like if we get 10 subscribers on YouTube, we will literally saw our dicks off and feed them to it's ourselves. Like, it's like those tweets where they're like a thousand retweets and all blah, blah, blah. Like uh, ten, yeah. 10 likes on this tweet and I'll blow Casey on camera. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. I don't understand what those like, what the companies get out of it. Like Just does engagement. a company really get that much exposure if like some random stranger gets a million retweets for lifetime chicken nuggets? Like Wendy's is always up to that shit. Wendy's is always on that shit. I think you need the engagement, the algorithm. The algorithm doesn't know that you're scamming the system, you know? Yeah. Or do that. Also, you got to pop off. Like you got to get lucky. Think about how many people in a day probably tweet like, yo, Wendy's, how many, how many retweets, how many yeah. likes for X? Right. Like when do they decide? Yeah. yeah like you got to be the lucky Wendy's retweeted me and said 10 million. We should try to do some, try to get a company to do that for us. Like just tweet at every company incessantly until one of them is like, all right, 10,000 likes and did you did X. you see the uh, uh, little clout grab I tried to pull off this morning on Twitter with Leonard you, Fournette? You Leonard Fournette because he's fat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so Leonard Fournette's getting a lot of shit for coming into camp for the Buccaneers really, really fat this year. And so with my workout video tweet, I just tweeted at Leonard Fournette. Don't don't listen to the media, bro. We got this as if like <laughs> we're in the same camp together. 
Uh, I mean, he needs to lose weight too. So we probably weigh about the same amount. That's probably true. It's just his is in different places, yeah. if you will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's distributed, a <laughs> distributed <different>. just <laughs> a little differently. I actually, I actually did that back in like, back in like junior year of high school. I remember looking up. I think like the best running back at the time was like Ron Dane or someone. He was like doing really, really well. And I looked up his stats and he was like the exact dimensions as me. <laughs> he was like six foot, 280 pounds. And I was like, so I could be an NFL so, running back. So I am Ron Dane. Wait, wait a second. But didn't he get in trouble? Didn't he like beat someone up or something? Maybe. Maybe someone else. Maybe. I disavow if so. Yes. If so, fuck him. Um, also, we might call this the sweaty episode because it is the heat wave won't stop. The boys are hot. It's hot in this apartment. Every time I come to Casey's now, I feel like he's trying to hot box me out. Because I, I hot box myself out. Yes, it's so hot. I actually got here. dizzy earlier today. I was like, okay, I should, That's why I I should one turn episode, the air conditioning on now. That one episode was going to pass out. I, this is probably why. <laughs> Dude. You get a water now. Wait, speaking of really quick, and we can get into things. I went to a water park this weekend. Like for my. Dude, I went to a water park very recently. Let's talk about this. For my nephew's uh, fourth birthday, my sister did a water park thing. So we went to this water park. I'm like still worn out. And I swear I'm still like just smelling chlorine a full day removed. Well, I guess yesterday was water park day, but still like I came home, showered, went to bed, woke up all day today. I feel like I still smell like chlorine and like it's all like the whiff of the water park is all that I have in my nose. This is an indoor water park. So I didn't know. I thought we were staying on the fats convo. Dude, I went to and I went to Nashville oh, for, Bre for Brenna's birthday. She wa was it, I, she wanted to go to water park so bad. So we went to this water park and I think every overweight person in Tennessee was at this water park. Dude, we were the only people I think weren't overweight. Listen, <laughs> it was crazy. Or water, had like the trashiest tattoos ever. <laughs> water parks are a lot of fun. I don't know if like like maybe we have a business here of like an upscale water park. Yeah. Because okay. Something about water parks just, just pulls in white trash. Yes, it was the white, like the, I've never seen so much white trash in one place. It was crazy. It Haley, was crazy. Haley and I, when we were walking in to check in, we saw like two parents like loading up their car, both just cigs hanging out of their mouth as they're like, they're like puffing them down, but they don't have hands. So that you, you don't look trashy smoking a cigarette, but you always look trashy smoking a cigarette with no hands. Yes. You've never not looked trashy smoking a cigarette with no hands. Or like, also with kids. If you or, got kids, yeah, around, or you're with your kids running around, you look like a piece yeah, of yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. For sure. But like you do that with no hands combined. It's like, cause like you can still like with a, with yeah. a, you're you too, look, you're too good at that. Yeah. You can look a little classy smoking a cigarette, like just normal. Yeah. You can look like a cool motorcycle dude. Yeah. Leather jacket. No, on the smoking thing, a cool. cigarette with no hands is not cool. It's a necessity is yeah. what it is. <laughs> yeah. It's like, even you though I don't have hands, it. I'll make it happen because of how badly I need this right now. Yeah. But yeah, the, uh, I haven't been to a water park in a very long time, and that was an eye-opening experience. Although, fun fact. Did you see the scale? They had a scale at the top of ours. Oh, that's crazy. They have, most people wouldn't have been able to go on the ride, so that's probably why they didn't have one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe they should have. Yeah. <laughs> you guys got lucky. Uh, but yeah, I will probably not be going to another water park. It was a, it was an odd, although, oh, well, I was going to say, fun fact though, Nashville, I forget as of what year, but it was per capita the like either most overweight or least in shape city in America, something like that. No shit. Yes. I would Nashville. have never guessed Nashville. Mm -hmm. Yep. Interesting. It's a good fun fact. So it makes, maybe that made sense. Maybe that's the explanation. Yeah. Sounds like it. <laughs> sounds like it. I think water parks are fine with kids. Also the kids were very overweight, which was like the other thing. I think an adult, I think going to a water park just as like a group of adults is probably. Which I was doing, which yeah. felt weird. Yeah. yeah. Um, but also there it's gr It was gross. I felt gross there. Yeah, you felt a little gross. You see, you're walking around barefoot, and there's just like all these people walking around, and I don't know. It's just yeah, but a I felt gross. I felt like it was so ripped up with the chemicals that there's no way any form of bacteria surviving. Yeah, literally anywhere everything. <laughs> like yeah. I'm lucky I made it out of there. Alive. Yeah, I was more worried about my skin <laughs> yeah. and like me as a human. It's like I want, acid burning your skin. Was off. yours indoors as well? No, it was outside. Oh, so this thing was indoors, dude. Like you would have to like every couple of hours, I just have to like pop outside just to be like. <gasps> <sighs> just like get, get a breath with of the air. Yeah, dude. I sw I was getting lightheaded. Yeah. I'm still like feeling groggy from that full day. To I be think. honest, I actually avoided going fully underwater the entire time. Did you, is that possible? Everything was going down in tubes. So I just was, you know, I was getting wet, but I never submerged myself out of like concern of what was in the water, both <laughs> chlorine, both chemical wise and human wise. Interesting. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. It's definitely, it's funny that it just called, they just called in there. It wasn't cheap. We didn't go to a cheap water park. 
But like there's just must be cheap on the scale of what other what else you could do. You know what? Actually, the other thing was that I remember when I was there at the end, they were playing like depressing suicidal music over the loudspeakers. It sounded post-apocalyptic, <laughs> like end of the world, some emo-y depressing song with kids running around at a water park. It was weird. I felt very uncomfortable at this place. The staff also, you've never seen a staff that wants to work at a place less than uh, the group yeah. of people that work yep. at a water park. They did not, they were not happy to be there. Yeah. <laughs> and like, it's funny because they're doing an activity that you would think someone would look happy doing. Like putting down a tube and being like, hey, you're next. But they're like, they like throw the tube down and they're like, get in the fucking tube. <laughs> and you're like, all right, buddy, relax. Okay. I didn't, I didn't apply here for you. I all also, right, man. We also went on one. It was uh, like you said, a tube, five people in a circle. And the guy goes, very melancholy, like who wants to go backwards? And the one, and the one, and the one, and the one girl we were with, she got like Brenda's friends. They go, oh, like I, I guess I will. And she went down backwards, and then she was the one where it goes that we went up, and then she just slammed the back of her head on the slide, like got absolutely her shit rocked. So I don't know if he knew that that's what happens. A person goes backwards, but he's like, who goes backwards? Me. And then she got killed. So. <laughs> That's, that's good. Yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> so that's probably a nice prank he plays on everyone that goes down. Um, all right, let's get into it. Do you want to go first? Yeah, I'll go first. So, uh, so I had a, a funny moment happen. This actually happened last weekend, but I didn't realize it until this past week. So I go to check my bank account this past week. It is like a thousand dollars lower than I'm anticipating it should be. Your like actual, if you mean you're, like your checking or savings account, you're saying? Yeah, like my checking account. I was just yep. popping in, doing my regular checking. Not what you want to say. Yeah, at this point, I'm pretty much like, I know I'm going to have money, so I don't look at it that often, but I do just pop in to make sure nothing crazy is happening. I don't look just because sometimes I really don't want to know. Yeah, it I'm, sucks when you do yeah. look when you don't want to know. 1K lower than I thought. So I'm like, that's tough. Whoa, what happened here? I go look at my transactions. I see like this $1,000 transfer to this savings app that I use. And me and Haley have like a joint savings goal on there for our wedding that we're saving up for thousand dollars. And I have just a regular rule that a hundred bucks a week gets taken out of my bank account and put into that Smart, savings goal. Responsible. Exactly. So I was like, what the fuck is this thousand dollar one time manual transfer? So I messaged the company and I'm like going back and forth with support. And the guy is like, if you don't have a rule for this and you didn't do it manually, like it is impossible that we took this money out of your bank account. And like, it's not a big deal because it's still mine, right? It's right there. I can see it. I could just transfer it back. Right. I'm just kind of trying to figure out like, why the fuck did this happen? And I'm going back and forth with them. And I'm like pissed at this point, more so because I'm like, why is he acting like I'm fucking lying to him? Like, I was like, why would I lie to this guy just to like give him a hard time? Something fucking went wrong with his app. Finally, I bring this up to Haley and I was like, I cannot fucking understand why. And I was like, look, like July 30th, like what were we doing that day? And Haley's like sitting there smiling at me. I was like, you're acting like you know something. Like we just fucking say it. And she's like, you're just drunker than I thought you were. And I was like, oh no, what? And she was like, you coming home from, we were at the bar for uh, Mikey Ryan uh, Campbell's uh, birthday party. She said, coming home from the birthday party, she's like, I don't know why you were being a big manly man. She's like, we were looking at our capital goal to see what we were at. And I was beating you by a thousand dollars with how much I had saved. Haley was beating me. Oh, so just, you kind she's of like, you had to be again. a big manly man. And like, just, you were like, I can afford it. And you just transferred a thousand dollars from your bank account into the savings app. So you could match me on our goals. So we'd be 50, 50. She's like, and she was all pissed about it. Cause she didn't want me to do it anyway. Cause she's like, why do you have to be such a manly right. man and match me or whatever? So net, then I had a message the customer support guy back. Like, oh, I'm an idiot. Yeah, and I just had to be like, so um, he's like, I have a ticket submitted. I opened my email this morning. He's like, I have a ticket submitted with my technical team. We'll try and dig into this. Like, you know, to be honest, it's not something I've ever seen happen before, so I can't figure out what it is. Don't tell me you told him the truth, though. I did. <gasps> I had to. No, but I'm saying like, did you just say, oh, I, I, my mistake, I actually did it? Or did you get specific like i was drunk oh i told him i was drunk. oh my god <laughs> yeah he definitely hated you and they also yeah. definitely showed everyone that yeah conversation. For sure. i almost told him i was drunk just because i knew that was going to happen and i wanted to at least give him that you know what i mean give him yeah. a little laugh with the boys around the uh right, water yeah. cooler if you will some like a token for like a payment for his troubles yeah. yeah we're like otherwise if i'm just like you know what i figured it out then he's just pissed at me he's right, like oh this yeah, motherfucker sure. did it and he's just not admitting it and like he figured it out like 
where like, at least if I'm like, listen, dude, I was wasted. Talk to my fiance. Turns out I did transfer that thousand dollars on my own. And he, yeah, I was like, oh, fuck. what was his response? He what was like, LOL, it happens. And then he's like, I'll go ahead and close the ticket. Out. Thanks for letting me you. know. Oh yeah. He was pissed. <laughs> He's like, this piece of shit. I've definitely done stuff like that too. Cause I'm, you know me, I'm very quick to get angry at things that don't work. <laughs> so if something's not working and I'm going to call customer support, I'll just, although I do try to give, it's never the customer support's fault, you know? Yeah. So I try to be patient with them. I'll be mad at, if they're not su- doing their job in supporting me as a customer, then I'll be a dick to them. <laughs> but if, you, if I'm not going to give them shit for the problem. You ever yell? You definitely have, because I have, which means you most certainly have. (laughs) You ever yell at the computer? Oh, yeah. I cannot. All the time. I have been like, operator, operator, or like, human, 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 (laughs) human. Do I do all the time? I go, zero, 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 zero. Shut up, shut up, human, (laughs) human. Yeah, I just do everything. It's so easy to let your frustration out on a computer. I wish it, like one day, one of these companies is going to release like the best selling audio book of all time, which we, will be like an anonymized recording transcript of like the best people customer getting, support, yeah. <laughs> people getting like angry at computers. Uh, yeah, I've definitely had, I wish I had a story off the top of my head where I did something like that, but I know I've done that several times. It happens. It's just the but most. It's, be- it's better than the alternative of something was fucked up. Like in this situation, you didn't lose the money, but say it was like, you didn't know where the money was. If you lost it, that'd be worse. Yeah, for sure. I'd yeah. be right. I'd be correct. Is <laughs> yeah, what I want to be correct. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I almost prefer to be right than have this happen. Or no, other way around. Sorry. I prefer to be wrong. I prefer yeah. to be wrong yes. than not know where my thousand dollars is. Yeah. Because that was uh, quite shocking when I woke up to that. Have you ever had, a, maybe not customer support, but a different situation where like you were swearing that something like, oh yeah, you were time, like, man. it happens a lot with stories. And when you're telling a story with someone and like you remember it happening one way. No, I, I never back down. But do you, have you ever gotten proven wrong and like not knowing what to do and putting you on the spot too much to remember something yeah, like that? Yeah, like I, not that I can remember off the top of my head, but I, I'm a big stick to my guns. guy. Like if I, like if I'm not sure, I'll yeah. say I'm not sure. If someone tells me confident, I'll be like, all right, like I'll go with that for now. But if I feel confident in something, no matter what you say, unless it's the hardest Proof, like hundred percent proof, I will stand my ground. But you will eventually give in, only if you prove it. There's nothing worse than a guy that, even with evidence. Oh no! If there's evidence, I'm out. But if you, if you, you better bring the evidence. Fucking Billy Football. I don't know why that pisses me off so much. Like Billy Football does it on PMT, and I'm like, it it makes me want to jump through the fucking phone and strangle him. Yeah. When they're like, wait, so you're wrong, right? He's like, well, no, kind of, I guess. And I'm like, dude, I'm going to fucking, I want to hit it. <laughs> I can't understand why. I see that dude walking around all the time. I've really? Seen, I've seen him several times, yeah. I think he's the worst. Really? Yeah. I used to not mind him. That I just did all those reactions to the the game show they just put out, the most dangerous game show. He looked so bad on that Is that show. over? It's over now. Who won? Tommy Smokes. He wins everything, right? Again. Yeah. He's like my hero. I, I was a little offended on your live stream. I commented and you didn't say anything back. I did. I think you left before I, I got back I, to it. I waited for minutes. I'm sorry. I'm really bad at checking that chat. Oh. I now put it in a position where it catches my eye. Gotcha. But I'm so, I was so bad in the beginning. Yeah, I waited for that. several minutes. I was like, all right, he's ignoring me. So yeah, no. I was Damn. like, fuck. I was so, if you, I might have stayed if you acknowledge me. I know I blew it. Um, but yeah, that happens a lot. But yeah, you just you just got to go into. I feel like you always have to go into something. If you're not sure, you just got to say you're not sure from the jump. So then if you're wrong, you just own up to it. But if you feel confident in something, never back down. Yeah. Yeah. But sometimes like the reason I'm like 90%, I'm smarter than the customer support person I'm talking to like 90% of the time. I don't know. Are you? And like, I'm, I'm trying to jump through their checklist of shit that I already know I've done a lot of times. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they have that whole list of shit they got to take you through. No, nothing is, yeah, nothing's worse than when you did the obvious, like, did you turn it off and turn on? Turn it off and, and, and you're like, yes, I did all this fucking obvious things. Yeah, I hate that. That yeah. gets me mad. Yep. Yeah. My mom one time got asked like two hours into a customer support call when I was little if she had the thing plugged in. And I, I, don't, <laughs> yeah. I don't think I've ever seen her boil over quite like she did in that <laughs> I, moment. That would make me lose my mind. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. It's this is a tough. We're episode. boiling. This We're is, boiling. Let's keep it rolling. You guys don't know the pain and suffering we go through to give you this to give you this show every week. If All you're right. watching on YouTube, you do. 
You could see That's it true. on my forehead. You could. Oh yes, I have the greasiest forehead ever. It's tough. Yeah. Try being. Try balding. Yeah. Well, I mean, I still say I am. Even greases though it, like it. But. <laughs> um. All right. Lantern flies. They're a menace. Yeah. <laughs> they need to be stopped. Yeah. Wait. What's the deal with these things? Dude, so I never saw these things. I never knew what they were. I never, whatever. And then Brenna told me, like, she's like, you know, you're supposed to kill those things, right? And I was like, what do you mean? Not supposed to. I got told you have to. Like by law. Like you will be, you you are at risk of a fine if you see one and do not kill it. Yes. So it's a- That is nuts. Um, It's so funny that Brenna told you that because Haley also told me the same thing. And this is like one of those things that like, I haven't even looked it up. I just bought it and didn't even ask dude, her a second question said. about it. Wait, that's, I was like, oh, <laughs> so we have to kill these things? Let's fucking do it. Yes, dude. Like I didn't, I didn't look it, I didn't look it up until the Hoboken girl posted something about it. And I was like, oh, I guess it was, I guess it is true. But Brenda told me like, we have to kill these things. And I'm like, these things have to die. And I just stomped everyone I saw with no proof that I had to do that. We go, we go out of our way. Oh yeah. If I see one, I, me and Brenna just point at it and I just, we kill it. And, and Brenna also like drags them. Like we're mean to them. Oh, we don't just, like, yeah. you don't just stomp. We like stomp and drag to yeah. make sure they're dead. They're also fucking quick. When yeah, you go they to are. stomp at first, they fucking leap out real quick. Yeah. They, they get away sometimes, but there's literally, they're doing a campaign called stomp it out in New Jersey. Cause they literally are telling people, if you see one, you have, you must stomp on it. You, you must you, like, murder it. You They're must literally, like, you must murder these bugs at all costs. I would like to join the force. What, yes. Dude, where I, is the I want to get paid for dude, pay, pay me a salary and I will go around North Jersey even, I and I will murder everyone I see. I'd like to do it for the I'll love wear, of the game. I'll wear a tactical I mask. Want, I don't even want the salary. For the love of the game. I'll wear night vision goggles. We'll be like, I'll take them out. A like neighborhood watch, but yes. for fucking lantern flies. Yes, dude. BB gun. <laughs> shoot them. Yes, dude. Because it's fun. Because it's like, when will you ever in life be told that you should kill something? Yeah. Like, and violently stomp on it. it. Like, yes, that's sick. Stomp it out. You'll never be told that again. I wish they would have like, it's probably too, it would have been a better joke, but like, it's probably too racially charged. But like, I wish it would have been like, curb stomp the lantern flies. <laughs> <laughs> like, that they, do, they should they should they should do what what they should do is like the new jersey you know like the new jersey twitter like the twitter handles always going viral and shit trying to be funny they should do like a campaign where they basically say send us your funniest videos of you murdering a lantern fly <laughs> to encourage people to do it like try to make like highlight reels of you murdering them i'm not even kidding you i, I would do it i think i am a, a sole reason i think i have blown up one of their favorite home grounds what do you mean where my stairs my, my iconic famous stairs from my workout videos. They used to love, they would be all over those things. And you just stomp them out? Well, I never knew what they were at first, but I just remember being like, what the fuck are all these weird looking bugs all yeah. over this? So I just walked by them. First day, Haley comes to the gym with me. She starts stomping them out. And I was Whoa, like, relax. what are we? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what are we doing hey, here? Hey, hey. I didn't realize you had that bone in you. Like, I was like, you just hate bugs? <laughs> She's like, we're like late to the gym. I'm trying to fucking cruise to get there. She's like, we have to stop these. I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> we have to. Do it. <laughs> like, what? It's so She's crazy. had some OCD trigger in her head that I was like, I need to stomp under yeah, one of these bugs. But that's so funny. What you said is exactly what I did. You get told that and you're like, all right, we're murdering. Yeah. And you're just like, no questions so asked. I'll like, kill everyone I see. I was like, well, I want to get to the gym <laughs> and we have to stomp these. So I guess I must help if we're going to get to the gym quick. I must. Yeah. I must. So literally they don't gather there anymore. Yeah. Like days of stomping them. Every time I saw them, I think the word got around. The stairs are <laughs> tell, no longer tell, safe. Tell your friends. <laughs> yeah, tell your buddies. Fucking stairs are no longer <laughs> no. a safe place for lantern You're flies. not safe around these parts. <laughs> but yeah, so it's something to do with their bad for certain plants and trees and stuff and they have That's sap usually, that kills things these come around like um once every like couple of years i feel like there's always some bug once every couple of years that everybody's like kill this motherfucker dude and this article too that i first read it's like the best thing to do is to stomp them out if you can't st- safely stomp them out here are the other ways you can murder them and they're like vin- <laughs> like vinegar this kind of soap is this one says vacuum <laughs> vacuum them <laughs> Like it just gives you all the ways to murder this, these things. Is this just a general, for the record, like they're not any special type of bug. So like, wouldn't this just be a general how to kill any bug? <laughs> yeah. like, like, hey, like say you were to murder a bug. This is what you would do. <laughs> um, what I what I thought too, when I saw this was like, basically how you made the point, no questions asked. You're told this by one person, not going to cross check anything. You just start killing them. 
what's like the highest you would go before you had to check? I, like, <laughs> like if someone's like bunnies are are, are killing all the, the the trees, like you have to kick every bunny I you really, see. <laughs> would you just kick the bunnies? No you know question asked. You looked that up. As soon as it takes more than a stomp to kill it. <laughs> If I have to like be like holding my foot down and like it's squirming under my foot, you even like hold around. Yeah. And Ellie, Ellie comes in and breaks his yeah. neck. You're like going around, just kick, like chasing after it, kicking it like a soccer ball, just because someone told you once. Yeah, yeah. Like just one time, stomp out all dogs are bad for cats. And just, <laughs> dogs are bad for cats. Yeah, yeah like only, oh, yeah, only, only. Uh, what's like a small, yeah. like a, like a stomp, wiener dogs? <laughs> yeah. Only wiener dogs are bad for the environment. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If a stomp, if a stomp dogs, isn't getting the job done, then yeah, that's, that's like, where I draw the line. But what about like a small bird? A, like you could stomp a small bird out. I like, fucking, I kill, you, I kill, I kill small birds. Yeah. Which, so you'd go higher than bug. Like any bug, I think I'm down. Yeah, bug, I'm but down. Higher than bug. Bug, bug we do it already, yeah. like without being asked. If they're in the house, they're good as dead. Outside, I usually try not to. I'm usually like, I'm in your territory. Once you're in my territory, it's game. I on. say the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, but so outside of bug, Haley's a catch and release. If that's not the most obvious wait, thing you've ever heard in your life, <laughs> have I talked about when I think I have when I had a mouse in the when I lived on the shore and I had a mouse in the in the house. No. Dude, so so I was crying about this the other day. There were there were mice. In, they were living in our stove. Okay, we were finding m- mouse shit everywhere. So I like don't want to kill. Like usually with me, in all seriousness, once it's more than a bug, I don't really want to kill it. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, I want to do a catcher. So I'm leaving out catch and release traps, and these motherfuckers are not going for the catch and release trap. Peanut butter, I'm trying everything. They're not going for it. For a month, I'm doing this catch and release trap. We're finding sh- poop all over the place. Then one day, after a month of trying to keep this, to safely catch and release it, I see it run across my counter. And then I saw poop somewhere and I literally was just like, I'm fucking done playing. Fuck it. I got the kill traps, put peanut butter on the kill trap <laughs> right before I went to bed. I didn't even fall asleep yet. Boom, heard it. And it was dead on its, got it on its neck. That's so weird. So then, so then I'm like, all right, I think I got it. But then I saw there was a baby. So I killed the mom, but the baby was still alive. So then I was able to catch and release the baby. I caught it in a catch and release trap. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna save the baby after already killing its mom, yeah. murdering its mom <laughs> yeah. in cold blood. Yeah. So then- This so is I, for you. This yes. wasn't for that, so that wait, baby so, mouse. So, this was a so you then, thing. So I think I'm being a good person by saving this little mouse. I brought it to the park and dude, it was covered in peanut butter and I just let it go. <laughs> Oh my god! I just was like, "Be yeah. free, little mouse!" Yeah. And it just it's definitely got eaten in like two seconds. <laughs> it's like, tough. like I thought, and I felt so good about it. But then when we talked about it afterwards, I'm like, "That was probably meaner than killing yeah. it." <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like a, a hawk definitely took it in two seconds, and like an orphan baby mouse covered in peanut butter. It's like, here you go, be free. It's definitely it's like, just dead. It's like covering a human in like honey. Yeah, in like and the middle of a bear and infested be like, woods. Oh, be free, sir. Yeah, like, you'll yeah. be all right, man. Yeah, um, but you'd kill a bunny. Uh, That's no, more of the story. I don't think I'd kill a bunny. <laughs> I told you I can't stomp a bunny. A frog? Right, amphibians. Yep. Yeah, amphibians. I've told you the story about the frogs, have I? I don't know. When my mom like questioned me and my friend and asked if we, like she basically was worried we were going to become future serial killers. Um, if you did, I don't remember. So one night it must have rained a bunch or something for whatever reason. It's like a night, my buddy's over. We're like just fucking around being teenagers like going to my backyard. We just started fucking these frogs. <laughs> everywhere. There's like frogs everywhere you look in my backyard. Like we're walking around and they're everywhere. And for whatever reason, we just start killing them. That's fucking me, dude. So fucked up. See, so you would kill a bunny. And then we took them and duct taped them across my porch railing by their legs. What? That's crazy. Still to this day. You're thinking, evil. Still to this day thinking about it. I'm like. I don't really know why we did that. <laughs> That's mean. But still, they're frogs. I really don't care still. <laughs> like, I actually don't care. Like, I don't think I'm a bad person still. And to this day, if asked, I'd do it again. 
That's what they tell you to do not like it's stomp out lantern flies and please hang frogs by their back legs. <laughs> yeah. Stomp out lantern flies and when you kill your frogs, by the Torture way, them. we're now hanging them by their back <laughs> legs on our porch. Torture all frogs. I also saw a bumper sticker literally yesterday that said MILF and it just said, Man, I love frogs. <laughs> I don't I don't know why, but I laughed really hard at that. <laughs> I, man, I, I've also man, find that funny. I love frogs. It's just a picture of a frog. You know what I've like to to maybe put a cap on the lantern flies thing. What I've really enjoyed about the lantern flies thing, it's very rare, even with bugs, that I get to see this like fire in Haley. Yeah, and like this little bit of like evilness in her because like even bugs in our house, she's a catch and release. Right, she'll try and put it. But outside once she's and let given it go. the green light, when she is given the green light and told like the rest of the environment is going to suffer if you don't kill these bugs. She came home today, smiling ear to ear, was like, I killed 90 on the soccer field. Yeah, she started, I was like, you fucking savage. She started to tell us how many she's killed and Gage was like, shut up, I'm on the like, other podcast. Shut up, shut your mouth. I can't talk to, I can't say it right now. <laughs> but literally, yeah, she comes home every day with like a new like tally of how many she got that day. Dude, they should make it a competition. They should give her a reward. They should. And they also explode pretty nice when you hit them hard. <laughs> I might, I might actually, I think I'm going to create a, an, an award for it. We should make it. Should we? Should we make like a competition? Like I'll do. You a, and I I'm going to do a ceremony in like downtown Hoboken, like the back, right by where my gym is. Maybe I'll do it at my gym on the rooftop, so we'll have a nice, uh, nice city skyline. City. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to award Haley with the like Good Samaritan Award for killing the most lantern flies in the month of July in Jersey City. <laughs> in Jersey City. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's get into our debate, which is a good one, I think. Casey's wanted to do this one for a few weeks. We finally got ideas. Can I, because I don't think it'll get drafted. Can I, should I give the, the, the basis for my fun fact for why I wanted to have this debate? Sure. Yeah. So did you know, I know you know this now because I told you, but for the listeners, did you know that the whole, you can't swim. Oh yes. yes, yes. You can't, you're not going to use this one, right? No. So you can't swim 30 minutes after. I think you said this on the show, didn't you? Did I? You can't swim 30 minutes after eating? And yeah. it's really just a myth that parents have made up because they need time to clean up lunch quick before they can watch a bunch of kids in the pool again. Right. So that made me think like, what are some other white lies that parents tell, or even specifically our parents have told us? So that's today's debate. Can basically. we say, can we say any adults like family members? Cause a lot yeah, of mine are like parents. Okay. Any adult. That's what most, most of mine actually are my parents. Like uncles. Like uncles, uncles are uncles and notorious grandparents. for yeah. this. Right. I actually have a funny one that my uncle undid for me, if you will. My uncle revealed the lie oh. on one of mine. But okay. I have a feeling we're going to have a different list. Yeah. Mine are very, mine mostly are specific. So shall spin we do wheel. it? Spin the wheel. 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 Whoa. Oh. Me? Look, look at it. Oh, wow. Yeah, you got to spin it's it again. It's literally in the middle. Yeah, spin it again. That's I didn't think it could happen like that. It literally just got caught in the middle. Okay, what are we on? Chance. All right. <clears throat> so I actually just got a text from my sister to correct one of mine because I slightly misremembered what the I also was, texted so. my sister to ask Yeah, her. I was texting my mom. I was texting everyone. All right. So now I'm going to not take – are we not taking like the blatantly obvious one? I think you can. I think I know the obvious one you're saying. I think you can. I I have it on my list for my honorable mentions and as yeah. like a backup because I don't think it's a great pick. Right. It's not a good pick. It's like the, uh, yeah. I feel don't like, say it. Don't all say right. It. I'm not going to say it. Okay. So my first one. So my grandmother, my Nana, she, the house my grandparents lived in was a duplex. So they, they owned. Oh, yours are going to be good. I yeah. can tell already. I'm <laughs> they, so excited. They for owned, yours. they owned a full thing. They owned the full thing. And there was a guy that lived upstairs to, that paid rent. So actually when you walked in too, which like a lot of these houses are like that in North Jersey, when you walk in the front door, you're kind of in between two floors. Yep. You go down to the basement, you can go up to the first floor, but there's also the guy has a separate entrance who lived upstairs, but you can get up there right from my grandparents front door. So it was always like. Don't go up there. They were always very, you know, which makes sense. Like, you don't want to bother the guy, but they always made like a real clear, don't go up the yeah. stairs. I never went up there. And they had a, a pedophile living right. above them. So, so they were like, so, let's keep our grandson away from him. So he, my, pays, he pays good rent and he's a great tenant. <laughs> all right. We're not going to kick him out. My Nana, a lot of times I'd go there for her to watch me. And when I was little, there'd be times where I would misbehave. 
as kids do. Yep. So what she would tell me was, if I was misbehaving, she would say, the guy upstairs is a cop. And if you don't behave, I'm going to call him and he's going to arrest you and take you to jail. <laughs> and every time she told me that, I would hysterically cry. And I remember one time her doing it. She's like, that's it. I'm calling the man upstairs and you're going to jail tonight. And I lost it. Just cried hysterically to the point I was grabbing her like her leg and being like, please, no, 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 I won't do it again. I'm sorry. And I was just crying. Like, you know, the video of the girl where they pretend she's invisible. <laughs> That's what I was like to my grandmother. So I thought she was going to have me arrested. I literally was envisioning being in the back of a cop car as like a five year old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I think that uh, I think I have a couple of those as well. It wasn't like a regular thing, though. It was more like there's definitely a couple of times that the cops have been threatened on me. Yeah. Or like good like calling jail on me has been threatened <laughs> and like thinking back about it. Yeah. No shot, yeah. obviously. But I always, I like my all growing up. I don't think I even realized it until I was an adult that the guy upstairs wasn't even a cop, but I always saw he was a cop. I have a question. Have you seen the guy upstairs? Yes. I'm starting to think the guy upstairs doesn't exist. No, he exists. You very, I very rarely would see him, but he did exist. I confirm he exists. Sometimes you can hear him walking around if you're upstairs. It's, it sounds, it's very confusing because it sounds to me like you're not us talking about God. <laughs> yeah. The man upstairs. Here, I'm yeah. going to call the man upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Jesus, Nana. Fucking AKA, I'm gonna fucking murder you yeah. if you don't start behaving better. Yeah, but grandson. She, it definitely set fear into my soul. But the one time I distinctly remember her grabbing the, the phone to saying she was gonna call him finally. That was the first time she like faked like she was gonna do it, and I lost it. I was very <laughs> I never misbehaved again. That was the first time the first like the pick up the phone was the big Yeah, the picking up the phone like she was gonna do it. Like she's like, I'm not fucking playing anymore. I, it got me. So I have one here. Yeah, I, I want to take this one first. Um, you can do anything slash be anything you set your mind to. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> Wait, that's really funny. No, you can't. This is the one my uncle undid because I always wanted to be an NBA player. <laughs> Really? You wanted to play basketball? That's up weird. In, up until I didn't start playing football till. No, no, no. I played football. I started at eight, but like up until like sixth or seventh grade, basketball was always my favorite sport really? between I the did, two. I did not know that. I just like hated it. I was just lazy, right? Basketball was like less work, less effort, especially as a little kid. Yeah. Like a little kid you basketball. You have to put equipment on. You just get yeah, a ball you're and not move, really, people You're after, not really yeah. running sprints or conditioning for little kid basketball. Maybe a little bit. Little kid football, like. Almost from like day they one. Kick your ass. Yeah, from like day one, they're like, you're an adult on this field. <laughs> Dude, when I was in Pop Warner, they would just, because they, they had a rule that every player had to play a certain amount of plays. So like the shitty kids, they had to figure out a way to get them their minimum number of plays. So the coach, to avoid doing that, would just try to get them to quit. He would just bully them all camp. So like for August, he would just bully the shitty kids until they quit. And he'd bully we, half those guys into quitting. So he's like, all right, I, now I can only play the good players. We, we used to talk about this during high school football when we really started to realize it kind of in the same vein of this debate. We used to look at our, our, our C team, the youngest age pop Warner team, our C team football coach was like arguably a legend. Like he, you can, I'm saying arguably a legend because it's just C team pop Warner football, but he would win a lot of super bowls in our league. They called them Super Bowls? Well, whatever they called them. <laughs> Championship. I think they called them Super Bowls. Whatever like, it was. But they weren't allowed to, yeah. whatever. And the big game. He didn't have any kids. No kids on the team. No kids ever went through the program. He just loved coaching football. Was a, bullying little was kids. a really nice guy overall, I guess. But we think back and we used to talk about how he used to like scream at yeah. us after games. And like we'd look at him then and be like, God, like our hero, like what a man. <laughs> and like now we think back about it, we're like, we were nine. Just a dick. <laughs> we were nine years old and you were screaming at us because we lost a football game. Like, dude, I I stayed up late the night before because I stayed over at my friend's house. Like, leave me alone, dude. Yeah, dude. I had one coach who was like, he was the one I think of who would try to bully kids. I have more respect for him, though, than any like man in my entire, any adult males growing up as a kid. But anyway. <laughs> but he was not nice to kids. To get to the point of when I really realized this wasn't true, my <laughs> uncle, uh, Uncle Donnie, shout out. Love him. Shouts but, Uncle Don. Love him for being a Don's realist, a at least. Man. He literally like paused a basketball game one day. <laughs> you know you'll never play, right? And he was like, He's like, like, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I'm probably 13 maybe. So like at an age where I should kind of know that. And I was like a professional basketball player. I think I could do it really. And he like paused the basketball game on the TV. And he's like, look at all the guys in the court. 
It's like, you see anything different between them and you? Like a multitude of things, yes. not just race. But yeah. like, I was like, yeah. And he goes, you can't. He's like, I'm sorry. That's Case. mean, dude. That's and he slut. literally goes, I'm sorry. He's like, maybe if you were saying NFL player, I'd give you a chance, but you definitely are not going to be a professional basketball player. And I was like that day, I just remember, it's kind of sad to say it now, but I remember being like, he's right. Like that day was my realization wow. that I was like, he's right. Like I could try as hard as any human has ever tried at something. I'm not going to be a professional basketball player. That's so mean, but it's Damn. true. It's true. But like 13 is young to give a kid that like, I mean, like, it's not like he was saying like, you can't be anything, <laughs> a firefighter or a policeman. He was like, literally you pick something you can't be. <laughs> like, he was like, you just can't do it, dude. I don't know what to tell but you. But that could be, that could be a, a turning point either way. That could be, you realize it or you just dig your heels and you're like, no, no, uncle Donnie. No, uncle Donnie. I'm going to show you. <laughs> it's like when my teacher used to say I'd amount, never amount to anything. Keep in mind, like I wasn't like the kid that, you know, put on his weight in high school. I've always been like the short chubby kid. Yeah. So I'm like a tiny little short round kid being like, I'm going to be a professional NBA player. Some, there's some chubby guys <laughs> in the NBA. It's possible. I think you could have done it. Maybe you should try out right now. Yeah. The chubby guys Start in training. the NBA are seven foot two. That's true. <laughs> That's true. What's your next one? All right. My next one. This is the same thing my sister clarified for me. And she gave me permission to say what happened to her as a result of the story. So my uncle would do this every time someone was getting potty trained. Every He did it to me. He did it to my sister. Every time you, one of the kids would start getting potty trained, he'd tell them, well, have you heard about the toilet sharks? And then, what do you mean? And he would say that there are toilet sharks oh, no. who would swim up the toilet, swim up the toilet and bite you when you sat down. So we'd oh, be no. just to, literally for no reason other than to fuck what with little dick. kids. Not to fuck with the kids, to fuck with their parents even more so. <laughs> yeah. So speaking of how it fucked with the parents. So I was worried. I, it made me scared. It worked yep. on me. So my younger sister, it works on her to the point where she like she texts me this today. She said she distinctly remembers. I remember this now. She's told me she held her pee in for a day and had to go back to diapers because that story of the toilet shark scared her so much that she would not go in the toilet. <laughs> so it like delayed her getting potty trained because she was so scared of toilet sharks. That. Yeah, my my sister, I can't even begin to tell you the things that my sister would do to me. If I did that to my niece or nephew. Yeah, that's mean. It's not just mean. It's like very it annoying. Yeah, it's very it's like it's like years of difference for your for your sisters. My kid is this irrational fear for now whoever, for fucking yeah, years. He's like your dad's brother, yeah. or your mom's brother. Yeah. Like it is years of difference for them. Yeah. That they have to work harder now. <laughs> two two uncles just not being nice to us. Damn. I love it though. That's what they're it's there funny. for. It's funny. Yes. It, it is kind of they're what there they're to there fuck for. With you. That's true. Fuck, I have so many good ones now. Like, I can't decide. All right, I'm going to take a funnier one. I'm going to take, I'm going to say right now, because I know my mom's going to listen to this. Mom, I'm taking the real one as an honorable mention because it's not that funny. It's just cute, okay? So my real, like, lie that my mom told me my whole life that really blew my mind, that one I'm taking an honorable mention, but I wanted to let her know that personally because she's going to be very upset each time she sees me take a pick and I don't take that one. Okay. So my next pick is going to be... um. It's just baby weight that still hasn't come off. <laughs> Got told that a lot growing up. So much. Yeah. Like at like 20. Until what age? <laughs> like I'm like 20 in what college. Age, what age did you stop believing her though? Um, <laughs> never. <laughs> <laughs> no, I realistically actually probably, she was legitimately saying that up until like I was 16. Like when I would come home and be like, ah, oh, like I'm the chubby kid or like, I just got to lose weight for this or that, like whatever. She'd be like, it's just baby fat. Don't listen to him. Or like if I got like somebody bullied me for being fat, she'd be like, it's just baby fat. Don't listen to him. And be like, mom, like I'm fucked. I have a beard. <laughs> not fucking baby fat anymore. Yeah. Well, yeah. Once you get facial hair, the baby fat excuse, I think goes away. Yeah. But when I was younger, I bought a hook, line and sinker. In fact, I would go ahead and say she shouldn't have been saying that. Cause I might've worked a little bit harder That's to true. eat healthy. I'm sure she I was like, over. Oh, I could have another bag of Doritos. This baby, this baby weight shit's just coming off. Thought it was like a sign sealed and delivered. Like, well, just baby weight. It'll be off soon. Not true. It's fucked up. Don't listen to it. Kids. Um, okay. If you're fat, you're actually just you're, fat. You're fat. <laughs> you're just fat. All just, those, all those fatties at the Nashville water park. I was at <laughs> you're fat. Do okay? something about yeah, it. Yeah. Figure it out. Tell mommy and daddy to send you to fat camp. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> those still, like, do it, are those still thing. No, no way. They certainly aren't called Fat Camp. Yeah, if they definitely are a have thing. a better name than that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Honestly, um, wait, they shouldn't, they just like don't have to call it fat camp. You like just if, know when you get there. <laughs> or just like, if you just send any of those kids to any camp in general, they will likely lose weight, yeah. right? Like if you're just going to make them more active. Yeah. Um, okay. My last one, this is not as specific. It's a little more, I think other people have gotten this one before. It's that people will know if you masturbate because you'll grow hair on your palms. Oh, fuck. I actually have a completely, I have the same one, but it was a different lie. Really? I feel like most people get that all the time. Like you'd be worried about jerking off because you're scared. I wonder if people that's like, will know because ha- hair will go on your hands. I, I wonder if that's, that's like comment. regional because the one that I thought people have gotten all the time, which I'm curious if people have gotten now is uh, it'll fall off. Your dick or your hand? Your dick. If you <laughs> no. play with yourself, it'll fall off. Cause I used to, as a kid, like be like, I would always have like my hand down my pants. Yeah. It's a, my mom would be like, get your hands out of your pants. And I'm like, eventually it was that. like, if you keep playing with it, it's going to fall off. Yeah. And I was like, what? I was like, fuck, I'm not fucking touching that thing again. I don't want that to happen. <laughs> it's going to fall off. Yeah. By that, I, for some reason, growing hand hair on my palms is more believable than my dick falling off. For sure. I yeah. would believe that years into the future. Yeah. 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 I just picture you jerking off being like, like check, like checking every time. <sighs> Like you're like wearing gloves crossed, and like you're like and then being like, here we go. Hope it doesn't happen this time. Last time it worked. Dude, that'd be a nightmare. That did happen. Probably I wonder if I ever had a dream that it happened. But um, yeah, that was probably I think most people have got I feel like a lot of people probably have had something similar like that. Parents probably I'm just realizing that parents probably can't get away with nearly as much of this shit. Like I actually was no, asked, cause the internet is yeah, I, kids know all that stuff when they're 10 now. I actually asked my sister. If there's any that she does with my nephew, my niece is still one, so she's yeah. not even really understanding them. If there's anything she does with my nephew, and a lot of the ones she was thinking of are really just the truth. Like she was like, uh, she like, we tell him like if you eat too much candy, your teeth will fall out. So, and I was yeah, like, well, not, that's kind of true. Right. <laughs> um, and then she's like, and she like, we tell him he has to go to bed because his brain only develops when he's sleeping. I think that's yeah. I was like, I mean, that's not entirely true, but. <laughs> It's not like, I was totally like it's wrong. not really like a white lie. I was like, yeah. it's a very weird way to tell him that. I was like, that incentivizes him. <laughs> like, You'll become autistic if you don't sleep. <laughs> Imagine like what, who is my nephew that he hears the words like you got to go to sleep or your brain won't develop. And he's like, Oh no. Oh no. I need a developed. I need a fully bedtime, developed mommy, brain bedtime. <laughs> or else I'm not going to be able to understand the periodic table. <laughs> <laughs> um, Okay, so my last one, that was actually going to be my last one. Really? If you play with your, if you oh, play with it, your off, dick yeah. falls off. Um, so I am going to take. Damn, I, I, if, I, if you stole that one from me, I would have been fucked because that was like the only one I had besides the right. obvious. Um, I got it. Yeah, I'm going to take this one. Um, if you don't stop, I'm going to pull this car over on the side of the road and leave you here. Oh, uh, yeah. That's a classic. All the time. Yeah. All the time used to get that one where like me, we'd be driving me and my sister be bitching at each other in the backseat. And like we would always shut up. We believed her. Yeah. Like uh, it's kind of like a pick up the phone one. We did have one time where she like pulled the car over and right. we were like, we're so sorry. Don't leave us here. <laughs> Call, yeah. Calling the bluff, the punishment bluff, like the obvious, like one a lot of people probably get also is uh, I'm going to wash your mouth out with soap. My one grandmother would always threaten me with that. Never did it once. No, phony. I've, I've had friends that phony. Have, I've had really re- did it. The reason that one works is because people will do it. I've never. I got threatened with that a lot, but it never happened. No, I never had it happen yeah. either. Yeah, my mom's too much of a pussy. Yep. <laughs> She's. I literally, when I got to the age where I could start like being like, "You're all talk," I yeah. would tell her that. I'd be like, yeah. "Come on, yeah, you're stop. all talk. Yeah, shut stop, up. candy." That's dude. That has to be so annoying as a parent, though. Once you, your kid knows you're bluffing, no matter what you tell them, you're like, "Fuck." Yeah, exactly. Now what do I do? But like usually that means- you start taking shit away. I feel like usually that means you have a good kid. You think? Yeah, if you're not punishing him that much. So like he just knows like, I can do what I want because like- Or you're just a pussy. True. (laughs) That too. Or you're a little baby back bitch. Yeah. And you just don't do anything bad ever. Right. Um, I have some uh, honorable mentions. So first one, this is the one I was saying is very cute. My mom used to do all the time. She had magic seasoning. Have you ever heard like- so she made food that I didn't want to eat because of whatever reason. It was vegetables, whatever it might have been. She'd be like, do you want me to put some magic seasoning on it? And I'd be like, yeah. And then she'd turn around, just act like she was shaking some shit over the top of my food and then turn back around and give it to me and I would eat it all. 
Wow, you're so dumb. <laughs> so dumb. I would never fall Worked for that. Worked every single time. Yes, you would have. No, I wouldn't. Yes, you fucking would There was would've. nothing even obviously on it. Like she wouldn't put, actually put anything on it. I mean, like she, I think as I got older, she'd go over to the cupboard and like grab a bottle of seasoning, but it would just be closed. And then she would like- That's go. what I'm saying. Like when you received it back, it never- It's magic seasoning, bro. You can't see it. <laughs> fucking idiot. You're, you fucking thought, you're an idiot. You, you fucking thought magic seasoning was visible like pepper, <laughs> like ground black pepper. No, it's magic seasoning, Vinny. <laughs> Duh. Moron. This is similar to, in a way, when people have done studies where they give- kegs of non-alcoholic beer and people still act drunk from a placebo. Yeah. It's kind of the same thing. You probably tricked yourself into thinking it was tasted different. I yeah, guess. I bet you it does. Like you, like you probably in your head think, oh, it tastes better now or oh, it's Matt. Like, you know. I don't think I ever really like tasted it. Like I, I think the thing is I wouldn't have minded the taste anyway just because it was green beans. I was like, no, I don't want them. And my mom knew that I liked green beans so she'd act like she put some shit on it. You know what I mean? Uh, so you're just a pain in the ass. Yep, exactly. Gotcha. Like all little kids are like, I don't want to eat my broccoli. When I was trying to research some things, I saw several uh i saw some funny ones i too. saw ones from parents where they would say they would basically trick their kids to eating vegetables by always leaving candy out and being like you can have candy whenever you want but then when they would eat dinner they'd be like you want a nice after dinner treat and then they give them like brussels sprouts so they tricked their kid over time into thinking vegetables were like desserts so weird like parenting tip that i feel like nobody would think of or know Unless you, I only know this because of being in this situation with my nephew. I did it and I didn't even, re, like afterwards, I was like, why the fuck did I do that? We had like this dried cauliflower in a bag from the store that I just wanted to try. Cause I was like, oh, dried. It was supposed to be chip replacement or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like trying it and eating it. And my nephew was like, I want one. And just without even thinking about it, I was like, oh, I don't think you'll like this, but here you go. And my sister and my brother-in-law were like, no, it's really good. You're going to love it. And they're like, they're like, don't like preempt him with like, you're not going to like this. Yeah. Cause he's dumb. So it's like a little thing that like parents probably don't even realize they do, but because nobody likes vegetables as much as other (laughs) foods, you're probably like, oh, vegetables. But then your kids see that and they're like, oh, vegetables. Yeah. Um, my only honorable mention was my grandmother and my mom would both always say, which is more just, it's a myth and they actually believed it, but then ended up being wrong is that. Crack your knuckles would give you arthritis. So I don't know if that counts. It'd be more of like a myth. Oh, like they actually believed it themselves. They believed it themselves. Yeah. So I don't know if that, that's why I didn't Um, use it. I have two that I really wanted to use, but I couldn't genuinely use them because they didn't happen to me. And I just like saw them on Reddit. Um, If you're good, you, uh, if you're good, you get the weekends off of school. (laughs) I saw that one and I laughed so hard. They were like, it took me so fucking long to figure out that like we all weren't there on the weekends. Like, how was I to know? I thought That's a bu- true. If you're not, I thought a bunch of kids of all the bad kids were just going to school on the weekends. That's and I was true. Good. That that could work. Damn, that's a good one, right? And then another really good one. I saw a couple of similar to this was uh, the ice cream truck plays the music yeah. to let people know they're sold out. I saw that one a lot too. Yeah, which is a good one because then the kids obviously never gonna. <laughs> yeah, they're like, ah, oh, fuck, it's sold out. <laughs> what do you do when you see the ice cream truck stop? That's the problem. You got to make sure you never see it. Yeah. Look that way. And then the classic one we were talking about, like any holiday, right? Santa, Santa Claus, Easter, Easter Bunny, Bunny, Tooth Fairy, like yep. any of those. Yes. That's why I didn't want to do that. Did all but. of us, I feel like every kid thinks they're tricky in the same way. Did all of us figure out the Tooth Fairy wasn't real the same way? You just like, you saw them do it? No, you like have that first tooth fallout that you're like, I'm not going to tell mom and dad about this. Oh, one. I never did. I feel like I just never bought it. Honestly. Really? I, I remember having my first tooth fallout and I was like, I'm just, you know what? kind of fucking a little sketchy of this uh tooth fairy gal i don't really know if i think she's real do a little investigating on my own had that tooth fall out kept it a secret from mom and dad threw that bad boy under the pillow next morning imagine that fucking tooth still there and at what age was this this has got to be like 10 11 no you lose your teeth way earlier than that 10 11 you're losing your teeth way before 10 or 11 i mean it must have been like one of the last teeth I'm losing because I'd already known the oh, tooth fairy. Oh, you said it was like, your first one. Oh, no, no, no. no. Oh, like oh. at some point, like all the other ones, I'm like telling mom it. Like, right, oh my right, God, right, oh my okay, God. Okay. Other things, okay. Yeah. Um, gotcha. But that has to suck too because for a parent, because the problem is you have to keep up tooth fairy to keep up Santa. Once tooth fairy gets revealed, the dominoes start to fall. They're like, <laughs> well, what about the other shit you tell? Yeah. What about the Easter bunny? What about Santa Claus? Like now you're fucked. You're trying to figure out how to like- you know, yeah. prove the lie, like not Once have to find that out. And Tooth Fairy is easy to figure out too. Yes. I almost feel like they made Tooth Fairy as the perfect way to like start introing you to the fact that all of these are fake. They're like, everyone will figure out Tooth Fairy on their own. 
Yeah. Then they're going to start asking yeah. questions. <laughs> and then once they put and that's the, how you get into QAnon. <laughs> once they put two and two together, that every kid all in one night is fucking impossible. That's a logistics nightmare. Then they'll know Santa's not real. That's that's why kids get into conspiracy theories. That's why you get into that <laughs> rabbit hole because parents start kids off not trusting authority. Um, all right, go into corners. Corners. I actually ah. think this might be due for a renaming, but I haven't landed on anything exactly. You don't like corners of the internet? I like that name still. I like corners of the yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Yep. I'm thinking like my my one take. It's too too cheesy. It's too like it's too like a uh, nail on the head. It's too like news, like 5 p.m. news yeah. broadcast, right? Yeah. yeah, fuck that. Yeah, Corner of the internet. Fuck your stupid idea, Casey, idiot. Um, who do you want to start? Uh, I'll start. Oh, spin it. No, spin it. Yeah, spin it. The wheel wants right, me. Casey. The wheel is just. The wheel, <laughs> the wheel is just. The wheel has spoken. <laughs> do you know the reference Fun magic Bob? conch, magic conch. Yeah. dude i tried for so long to be able to do that with my tongue it's just impossible i can't do it. i have a small i would tell you i have a small tongue i have the smallest tongue ever we yeah what a Real baby small. ass tongue we have talked about this. pussy ass tongue does that mean you're bad at aspirina <laughs> <laughs> might have to cut that for mrs chance honestly yeah. that was a little too much eh. behind the behind the curtains eh. ew <laughs> okay continue <laughs> Uh, speaking of behind the curtains, so I'm going to talk about the Deshaun. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Speaking of cunnilingus, <laughs> that would have been better. That would have been better. Oh, that's the worst. Okay. So my story this week is Deshaun Watson related. We've talked about the whole Deshaun Watson shit on here before. The suspension just came down like a week ago. And now the NFL is appealing the suspension. I don't honestly really understand what goes on with the NFL disciplinary Right, protocol. it's kind of fake. Like Goodell appeals it, but then he can appoint the person who's deciding on his appeal. So it's kind of like fake. Like he it's like fake. It's like fake court. Like yes. they make it seem like real things are happening, right. but then at the end of the day, it's like just like they do the business math and figure it, out it's a facade. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, he gets suspended for six games. I I don't think it's worth it for us to sit here and comment on the fact that it's just like ridiculous that you can molest twenty seven people. And get suspended for a total of six football games. Right. And the, or let's say like even take that a further zoom out step of the fact that we are, there is a real judge who is like deciding how many football games 26 molestations are worth. Yeah. Like what the fuck? That is just crazy in its own right. Besides. Yeah. The, like it's. Yeah. They should. That should. The judge should be doing the legal. Yeah. Stuff. I think pretty much everyone on the planet would agree that six games, actually most people would assume everyone on the planet would agree that six games, it's just not enough for, for whatever this guy did. Right. Now the, the truth of the matter is he like never got charged by any of these women. Somehow every single woman settled out of court. Amazing how that happens. But like he never, he never was criminally charged. So like by rule, he can play. He's not a criminal. He didn't get charged with these things. So it's that weird, like this guy's a scumbag and we all know it, but I find the most interesting thing about any of these, and this one's a, a huge microcosm of it, is like the way the team reacts or the fans react of the team. Right. Because like you can't help those decisions if you're the fan, right? But if you're a lifelong fan of that team, all I'm going to say is if Deshaun Watson got signed by the Giants and this was the Giants, yes, I think he's a scumbag. Yes, I guess I would want him to be suspended, but maybe not. I don't know. I guess that's my point is like, yeah, I'm, it's kind of tough to be like a fan of a team and then have all this happen because you're kind of like, uh, well, you know, they it's the NFL rules. We're following the rules. Well, it's kind of a two way thing because we're talking about on the Browns specifically. They're always a joke. They can never get a good quarterback. So on one hand, you can go. Well, we finally have a good quarterback, so obviously I don't want him to get suspended. But on the other hand, you could definitely go, well, typical Browns, they traded off all, like, all these picks and all this stuff and paid him all this money. Then he's you know, getting suspended. There might be something else that comes down the line or there's more happening. You can kind of be like, oh, same old Browns, like something's going to go wrong. Like, it kind of makes him look like a joke. So, something's going to go wrong. I think the, the main thing I'm saying here is like, if you had a scumbag on your team who by all NFL rules is allowed to continue playing – but he's just a total scumbag. 
I mean, that's like the Ravens were cool with Ray Lewis and he murdered people, so allegedly. Yep. And I think the fans are always going to be like that. And I, I, so I just think like, I saw a couple of Browns fans. I was looking up uh, Browns fans reactions to Deshaun Watson. You can't, you can't go all the way defense. Yeah. You got to be like, you just, but, you yeah. just can't be like, uh, I saw like some shirts being made that were like talking like shirts referencing like, like Deshaun's going to put you in a massage chair, like shit like that. Like you can't do that. The, the, the classic things I saw are people saying that the national massage convention is happening in Cleveland this year. Ah, oh, that was a classic yes. joke. Yeah. I, I thought it was photo. I assumed it was Photoshop. That's what I thought too. I actually didn't even look into That's it. what happened with what happens with the internet now is I always assume everything's fake. Or, you have to assume yeah. everything's fake. Yeah. Um, I also saw the shirts that like, they make them about like every player. It's like the classic shirts that are very funny about Deshaun Watson now which is like they would make one about like Zach Wilson, where it's like the boogeyman, like when he goes to sleep, the boogeyman checks for Deshaun Watson under his bed when he goes to sleep at night. Yeah. And like, I was like, yikes, that shirt rings a little bit too true now. That's what's going to be tough too for them is every away game you got like the, that team has ammo of what to talk shit about, the chance to do the shirts to wear like the, you know, but it's going to be tough for him to play at road games all season. So I guess my question is how, how, what is the best way to handle that as a fan of the team. Just don't talk about it. You just act like it's not a thing, right? Because because eventually, if he's actually good, you just hope he starts playing well, and then that will over, that will overtake the, the news cycle eventually. Everyone eventually forgot that Ray Lewis allegedly killed someone. Can I? It'll eventually, like, it'll eventually, if the Browns win a Super Bowl, everyone will be like, oh yeah, rest in peace, but Kobe had an incident. Eventually, everyone kind of, if you play well enough, everyone forgets about it. So you just kind of got to, let it pass. Let everyone get off whatever they got to get off and hope he's successful and eventually it'll go away. Yeah, I actually, on that note, I was trying to craft a tweet and I just couldn't figure out the way to do it to make it not sound really fucked up. Yeah, it's tough to do that in writing. Something along the lines of the, uh, if a tree falls in the forest, but no one's around to hear it, did it make a sound? Right. And it's like, if an athlete commits a heinous crime, but he's really good at that sport, did that crime even happen? It's true. That's actually the way to phrase it. I was going to make it specific to Deshaun Watson, which doesn't, I was going to say like uh, philosophical question of the day. If Deshaun, if, uh, if a quarterback, if a quarterback molests 25 women, but he's good enough, did it even happen? Yeah, that's, will get you in trouble. The crime, you can get away with it. The crime one would play. The, if, uh, yeah, yeah, the way you just tweet that, the way you just said it was the right way to say it. Without anyway, I guess my, by the libs. my big take here is any NFL fan. This is my big point. My big take, my, my, my bring it all together. Wrap it up. Any NFL fan who says like, looks at the Browns and is like scumbags. Like you can't root for that team. What a scumbag. They're right. But they would be doing the exact same thing if it was their team. Hypocrites. As most people are. They would be doing the exact same thing. I'm right. trying to think of, I think if Deshaun Watson was on my team. I think it'd it'd be kind of similar. I'd treat it the same way I do like a rebuild. Like you're just disgusted with the moves the team is making, right? Like you're just like, God, I just fucking hate this team, but I'd still watch them every Sunday. And like Deshaun makes a sick play. Like I definitely would be like, fuck. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Good job. No, I think once he, I think by like once they're in the last quarter of the regular season, I think it'll be a forgotten thing. Once he's played several games, as long as you're not atrocious. Because if he's if he's bad, if he doesn't play well, then also at away games, like I was saying, the shit talking is going to rain down. But if he's playing well, that people can't really use that, like can't you can't really talk shit as much, I feel like it'll get swept under the rug. Unfortunately. I feel like he's got to play like shit. I, I, he's on the Browns. I feel like they're cursed. I feel like he's going to play like shit too. And also there's like no way... There's no way you can be going through this and and still be good enough to be the best quarterback in the NFL. Yeah, I don't. Th- I actually am like not expecting him to do well. No, not at all. No, and I'm also Team Baker actively rooting against him. Yes, for sure. For the record, hundred percent. If it we wasn't are. obvious, we are we are an anti Sean Watson podcast. Is that my cat just being so fucking? Yeah, annoying? She loves my bag. It's okay. Okay, she's cute. Okay, last thing, uh, my corner. So this just came out today. We're recording this Monday, day before this episode drops. KD, Kevin Durant, told the owner he went to London. She's, she's okay. Um, 
Kevin Durant went to London to meet with the Nets owner, Joe Tsai, or whatever the fuck you say it, and basically was like, it's me or the GM and head coach. Sean Marks, I believe, is the GM and Steve Nash's head coach. So basically, he want, he also put in a trade request a while ago. So he's basically saying, trade me or fire those two. So what I thought with this, so like this is a big thing in the NBA. Like they always say, like LeBron is the GM. Like LeBron is always pulling the strings and saying who to, you know, whatever. KD is trying to do that now. The, the players should just be the GMs. Yeah, I know where you're going. The, they should just like... NBA players, because NBA star players make a, like, probably the only comparison to be an NFL quarterback, and probably the NFL should adopt this too with quarterbacks, make such a big impact. Um, I don't know what the right word is. Like, their impact is so much greater than your average player. Yeah. One player can carry right. a team. So there's five people on the court at a time. So what NBA teams should do, and I think this would keep guys on a team, is to so say you sign Durant to a five-year deal, be like, it's a five-year player and GM contract. I've got, I'm going to go one further for you. Okay. I don't think it would happen with the Brooklyn Nets because I think they're too big of a market. But let's say you are the Sacramento Kings. Yes. Or is there another basketball team we said is so irrelevant? Like the Hornets, maybe, or Sacramento the- Kings, New Orleans Hornets, any one no, of them. Well, Charlotte Hornets. Say you're one of, or Charlotte Hornets. Yes. Yeah. I don't even fucking know where yeah. they're at. <laughs> say you're one of these teams, right? Really small market, tough to get big players to come there. And you're like, Kevin, not only, Will you be the GM of this team? And you don't have to do all the paperwork. We're handle paperwork. Right. We'll do all that. Hire your guy to be the financials us, guy. Yes. Yeah, you You're just the have to tell us like, who to go get and you got to help us go get them and whatnot. Right. Not only will you get to do all of that and really dictate your future here and build your team, but this will, while you are here, we will be known as Durant. Durant's team. Team Durant. You can't. <laughs> like we we will be home based in Charlotte, North Carolina. The Charlotte Durants. Yeah, like we'll be Charlotte like, Durantulas. Or just like, yeah, just like Team Durant, if that's what you want it to be. But like, this is your team. Like, and then imagine if my point, I guess, is imagine if that's what the NBA was. It's no, not that, that's the what Cleveland I, Cavaliers and the Los Angeles Lakers. It's like whatever the big star is on your team in your city, like it is Team LeBron, Team Durant, nah. Team Kyrie, Team whatever. I'm down. I, that's what it is anyway. Why not just call it that? I'm, besides for the name change, that's basically what I'm saying is I think teams, like if they, like li- literally, if they do that, because what happens is those star players like LeBron and Durant are basically acting like the GMs anyway, forcing people to do shit because they have leverage in the NBA. They do things, but then if things don't work out, they will just demand a trade or, or leave or whatever. But if you're the GM, and like the the terms of the contract have to be, but like you can only be the GM if you go. You have to. You can't leave earlier than the contract. You have to be the full term of your contract. So if I have a five year contract that I can't leave early, I can't trade myself. I'm stuck there for five years. I'm incentivized to always like do what's best for the team because that's what's best for me. So Durant can't like try to force them to make trades. Then if it, they don't do what they, he's like, fuck this, I'm out. Because now you're like, oh well, now we're fucked. Like you yeah. fucked us, Durant. Yeah, or if, or if like what LeBron's doing right now. Right. Like the Lakers are old it, and they have no prospects because LeBron is only focused on when he's on the team now, which he'll do, but you don't have the fear of well, LeBron's going to leave next after his, you know, his contract's up or he's going to demand a trade or whatever. Like I think you just get someone to be the financials guy to make for the contract shit and then you have your star be the personnel guy. And also, then you got to think about say Durant's the GM, right? He's the GM of the Nets, let's say, and a player. If he wants to leave, will he want to leave and not be the GM? You know, so now it's like you're almost incentivized to stay because now you're like, well, what teams can sign me and will hire me as GM? Or like, don't already have a star that's the GM. It will also maybe stop like super teams because while I want to be the GM, they already have, uh, like Damian Lillard's already the GM of the Trailblazers. I don't want to go join up with him (laughs) because then I can't be the GM. I want to be the GM. That helps league parity. I think, I think I, I like all of it. I think I kind of just, you know, what it's becoming is just like, a, which is in my mind better than the NBA is like, if we let all the best guys in the NBA be a captain and we played pickup for a season. That would like be cool if it reset every be? year. Yeah. If we did like an, a fantasy draft, like you used to do like an, a Madden, if you played season with your buddies, yeah. did like a fantasy draft where it was like the top, maybe like they do that top NBA players. Maybe the top 30 active NBA players all get a team. Our captains, yeah. Our captains. And then the draft lottery could be random. 
And then like you draft the guys to your teams. Yeah. I, I just think the guys are already GMs and I think like de facto, maybe just not in title. And I think if you actually make them, you could probably find a way to start making that a thing. What did, you pay attention to the NBA more than I did. What was that? What is that thing that they were all playing in um, that like guys were all putting Guys were all getting viral because they were putting like the tape over the Adidas logo. Oh yeah, they were playing the Drew League, and then there's another league the they're Drew playing league. in the Drew League. Yeah, it's just like a famous. That's kind of what we're kind of like inventing yeah. a little bit here. Is like, what if you just took a league? Problem is, like, it can't be as serious as the NBA. Like, you can't really do it like that. Yeah. But it would be really interesting to just like cut out all the fat and like, what if we just saw a league of like the best fucking fifty percent of the NBA, and then they drafted to teams and played pickup ball for a whole month yeah it would be cool be I, so I just good. i just think the gm doesn't really matter because like if you because like in today's nba if you have a star player the star player has so much influence that like i just think i think the head coach matters less than the gm i think the head coach matters more i think the gm is more it's like having conversations with agents that's like the big part that's like if kevin durant's the gm sure he can get anyone to come there and like i guess maybe your point is like they could have a more real conversation because they're both players. So it'll, yeah, and then it'd be have, more of like a negotiation of like what's best for the team and not so much best for him. And then you have a guy that's like his position is basically to do what the GM used to like do now with dealing with the agents and shit. But th it's almost like a uh, like they're just handling the logistics after the player GM makes the agreements. Like, all right, we want to sign this guy. Can you make it work financially? Like. And they're like, yes, we can. No, oh, we have to do this. Like, it's kind of like a teamwork thing, but the players as a final say. But then the problem you end up with is like, you know, like wouldn't every, like, I imagine every GM would probably want to sign. I bet you the next GM is like, Kevin, we would love to sign all the guys you want us to sign. Problem is like, there's agents we got to deal with who have certain ass and like, we just can't meet them. And like, we need to make things work in a budget and like put players Yeah, together. so you have a guy that does that. So but then like, if Kevin Durant is the GM, and he's like, um, yeah, I want Kyrie Irving. And then your other guy's like, well, the agent won't give him to us for a price. And well, that's just, that's what it is then. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But I just think, I think do, my, my main reason for say, suggesting this is that I think if you set it up where the player has to pay out their contract for that to happen, it incentivizes, it like you lose the fear of the player is going to try and dictate what the front office does, but then you have to be worried they're going to leave when the contract's up. Because in a way, it's like, or like demand I, a trade. I like it a lot. Because Durant's demanding a trade. He just signed an extension. And he's I, already demanding a trade. I think we're not that far off from player coaches. We yeah. might be a little bit further off from player GMs. LeBron is close to that. Yeah. LeBron's close for that, for sure. Um, all right, that's an episode. Went a little long. It's okay. I had a good time talking to you yes, today. Yes, I had a good time. I always have a good time talking to you. Um, yeah, anything else? That's all I got. Love you guys. Love you guys.